This is the Black, a Tier 7 Premium American Destroyer. It's one of the two reward ships in the Lucky 6 campaign, the other ship being the Tier 5 Aircraft Carrier Independence. The Black here has awesome torpedo specs as far as range and damage output, but it is definitely lacking in the torpedo speed department, which we will cover quite extensively here, but you definitely want to set the ship up as a gunboat, and we will get into that with the setup of the ship and the commander, who is Vincent Mordoff. And here I've selected Vincent Mordoff, but you can see that you have other options here for American destroyer commanders like William Halsey, Arlie Burke for uh, gunship commanders. You could also try Albert Gleaves, and this is definitely not a torpedo boat. You will definitely be wasting your setup uh, and time with Albert Gleaves because of the very slow torpedo speeds here. So if you don't have Mordoff, you want to go with either Halsey or Burke here. Halsey is probably the closest to Mordoff as far as the specs. So Mordoff space trait is waste not. Destroyer's main battery reload time is improved by four and a half percent. As for inspirations, I have Anton Gurin Stabber, and it improves the destroyer's armor piercing shell penetration. And then I have a Philippe Abanu powder keg, which improves the destroyer's main gun HE shell damage by three and a half percent. And then for the skills, I have observant range which improves the destroyer's main battery reload time and the torpedo detectability range, but it does cost rudder shift time. You can see it's uh, decreased by 10% there. The second skill is mortar, which improves the destroyer's main gun AP and HE shell damage, but it is at the cost of destroyer detectability. The third skill is perceptive, Incoming damage to your destroyer and the torpedo detection range is improved with this skill. And you will see the direction of your closest enemy ship, and this is probably the biggest key to perceptive right here. And smoke on the water is the fourth skill. Smoke screen dispersion time and its deployment time is improved by 6% respectively. And the legendary skill is unstoppable. It improves the engine repair time and allows for reduced mobility with a disabled engine and or rudder. The special effect is a damage control party cooldown time. It's improved by 50% here with this setup. And it is active when you are within four and a half kilometers of an enemy ship. You can see in parentheses, if you go to legendary rank three, it goes up to six kilometers and 7.5 kilometers for legendary rank four if you max out Mordoff. All right, let's check out the upgrades. First upgrade is aiming systems mod one. Dispersion of the main battery is improved by 7% and a torpedo launcher traverse speed is improved by 20%. And then we have propulsion mod two. Time taken to reach full power is cut in half. It's improved by 50% right there. And then the third upgrade is concealment system mod one. Detection range is improved by 10% and incoming fire dispersion is improved by 5%. And then the last upgrade here is a main battery mod three. Main battery reload time is improved by 12%, but you do take a little bit of a hit on the traverse speed, but I haven't seen this a problem in a standard match and you definitely do not wanna concern yourself with the torpedo launchers here with this boat as we will look at later. Normally I definitely would, would do the torpedo upgrade here but not with the black. You definitely go with the main gun improvements all across the board pretty much. And the loadout. Uh, ammunition, high explosive shells and armor piercing shells which we will get into in a minute as well as uh, quite a bit of information probably about these torpedoes. Consumables, you have your damage control party. Duration is five seconds, reload time is 40 seconds, and there is an unlimited number of these consumables. Smoke generator, uh, consumable duration is 29.7 seconds. Dispersion time is 131.4 seconds, and the reload time is 240 seconds, and you have two of these consumables. 
And then the third consumable is the radar. You definitely want to go in here and make sure that you select radar rather than the engine boost. Detection of ships is seven and a half kilometers. Duration is 13 seconds, which is not really all that great. And this is the one downside to the radar. Reload time is 150 seconds and you have three radar consumables. So that is good. And we're running a whole bunch of boosters here, but uh, during an actual battle, this could change. Camouflage, the ship does come with a permanent premium camouflage, but because it's the black, I did create a shadow premium permanent camouflage and maxed it out. Sea detectability range and incoming fire dispersion is four and a half percent respectively. And then I'm running the black flag that comes with the ship after you uh, complete the campaign. Stats, survivability hit points is 16,700. Armor is 6 to 20 millimeters. You definitely do not want to get hit. Artillery, you have five guns. They reach out to 11 kilometers. Reload time is down to 2.7 seconds with this build. And the traverse time of the main battery is 6.1 seconds, which is really quick. And that's why I didn't mind uh, taking a hit there on the traverse speed uh, in that one upgrade slot. HE shell damage is 2043 with a 5% chance of setting fire. And this is where the uh, skill enhancements of Mordoff definitely come in handy to help the fire setting chances and the damage of the HE shells. And even the armor piercing shells, 2310. And this is the one problem with the. Uh, the Black's uh, main battery is the low output of HE shells and armor-piercing shells, and it seems like with Halsey and Burke, uh, you don't really um, get that much damage output when you're hitting the enemy ships, and that's why I think McMordoff does give you a little bit more damage output on the HE and the armor-piercing shells, and for me, this was uh, a big difference once I started using Mordoff. I was getting wiped out pretty regularly when I used Gleaves, Halsey, and Burke even. So I was having some bad luck with the black, but things turned around with Mordoff. Torpedoes. You have two launchers of five torpedoes each. Reload time is 96 seconds with this setup. Maximum damage is 21,600. And I believe the only ship in my port that has a higher torpedo damage is a Shimakaze. Detectability range by sea is 0.9 kilometers and that is really short. That is awesome. Torpedo range is 13.7 kilometers, which also is really awesome. But the torpedo speed at 43 knots is the huge problem. And there are only three aircraft carriers in the game that I have seen. I have pretty much all the aircraft carriers that have a slower torpedo speed than the black. Every other ship in the game, whether it's aircraft carrier, destroyer, cruiser, or battleship has faster torpedoes than the black. And this is the big problem strategically with trying to set up the black with a torpedo setup. You just really can't do it because the torpedo speed is so slow. They're almost like uh, floating uh, sea mines is how I've heard it described. Here are your AA defenses. This looks like a lot of AA defenses here, and you probably will clear the sky pretty well with the black, I would imagine. Maneuverability, maximum speed is 36 knots, which actually is pretty slow, and there is no booster because we selected the radar, so you don't get a speed boost, and there are some ships in the game that could outrun you. Turning circle radius is 560 meters. Rudder shift time is 3.3 seconds and there is no problem there. Concealment is 6.3 kilometers range by sea. Detectability range by air is 3.3 kilometers and 2.6 kilometers while firing in the smoke. And the reason why I do not mind uh, 6.3 kilometer detection range is because at tier seven, you will actually run into many cruisers with radar and so the the whole thing is kind of bad as far as a great concealment on a destroyer at tier seven and above so you really want to stay outside of the red team's radar range if you can and this will kind of help force that. at least that's my rationale and here's the armor like i said you definitely do not want to get hit overview extended smoke 
increases the smoke screen duration that is awesome reload above average main battery reload speed and you will definitely uh, put that to good use because your main guns is pretty much going to be it because of these slow torpedoes right here below average torpedo speed and that is no kidding that almost negates the black as far as being a torpedo threat you will get torpedo hits but they are when you uh, send random salvos out with your torpedoes and the uh, red team ships just stumble upon them is what it seems like to me black is one of the numerous and very successful fletcher class destroyers which boasted a sufficiently high speed powerful dual purpose artillery efficient AA defenses and decent torpedo armament <laughs> except for the speed okay entered service in 1943 and there was a whopping 175 ships in the series all right well that's it for the setup of the ship and the commander let's go out in a standard battle and check out some highlights All right, so the first highlight I'm gonna show you is in crash zone. And you can see I'm running the white camo. This was an early test when I was still running Halsey to see how he would work out. And so that is who the commander is here. I have them mostly set up for main guns, not torpedoes at all. There I'm lining up the hood like I normally would if I had a torpedo build. And look at the uh, intercept point, 86 seconds at a 10 kilometer range. So. I let one rack go right where the indicator says, and then I take another shot closer to the island. So this is a complete random guess here. You see that none of those torpedoes are gonna hit the hood. And here's where my big time strategy with the hood uh, torpedo action goes. And you have to rely on the red team to turn around like this and stumble right into the path of your torpedoes where you uh, completely guessed that he would uh, he would go and there you go this is unbelievable it's better to be lucky than good sometimes and that's definitely what happened here but in any event this is my current strategy for torpedo action on the black and it's because those torpedoes are simply so slow so here a few minutes later we haven't really done any more damage than we did with those two torpedo hits on the hood. And you can see we've engaged the hood again. Smoke He's still set. at half health, so he really hasn't incurred much more damage than the initial salvo. So here, I try to shoot behind the Vlad right here with this first rack of torpedoes. I've done this dozens, if not hundreds of times with normal torpedoes, and it's usually no problem to clear the ship and you can see that these torpedoes are so slow that that was definitely a mistake with the black I did not have enough room right there and that was a wasted rack so I take the second shot once I'm hundred percent sure that these torpedoes are going to clear the bow of the Vlad but I'm in my smoke screen right here and the hood knows that there's a Vlad there he knows there's a smoke screen from a destroyer here and he just keeps it backing up in that general direction, which is kind of unbelievable. Because I'm going to claim that what you're going to see here in a second is he is going to stumble into some more of the torpedoes from the black here. This is uh, kind of crazy, but this is how this match worked out. All right, there he goes. He is gone. And that is it for the hood. We did capture two flags already in this match and you know you always see videos about destroyers doing their job well in this particular match we captured all three flags uh, solo actually we were the only ones on the team to capture flags um, well at least all my captures were solo I'm not sure what the other teammates did but in any event we definitely did our job as far as capturing bases in this match here with Halsey and the black, the mains there, beached himself. So at eight kilometers away, I don't really have a problem going head to head with the mains when he has no health like this. So we took him out, that is awesome. He did get us with his uh, death throw there with his uh, main gun. 
last main gun salvo as he went down. And the battle has ended, and that was a big time win. I thought it was a big time win. Captured all three flags, finished first place overall with 2200 XP. And so I was pretty satisfied with the black at that point. But I decided to start checking out my other commanders. I've had Mordoff for quite some time. And there you go. I've got Mordoff. I haven't really used him much except I tried him out in one of the rank seasons once. I think it was during the one versus one events. And in any event, I thought I would give Mordoff a try here. He does give the main guns more damage output. And that was my big problem with the black. Uh, with Halsey or any of the other commanders is it seemed like the main guns just did not have enough oomph at all and yeah you would get hits but they wouldn't really do that much damage so the thing about Mordoff versus Black or, or versus um, Halsey or Burke is that he, Mordoff does produce more damage because of his skills and it's just a little bit more damage but I think it is enough here but here I am in A, I'm starting to capture it. You can see the perceptive indicator is showing that there is an enemy ship right in that general direction. So I let those very slow torpedoes go. And so now my plan is to just wait here. And if I get spotted, the plan is to hit the smoke, like right here, I'm spotted. I hit the smoke and then I hit the radar and that is when the scone pops up here and if I was a little bit better with my main guns or a lot better with my main guns I probably would have gotten an initial hit there and the scone might have been in a lot more trouble than he eventually was but that is it that's the 12 second radar and you're basically done at that point so you've got to hope that you can deal a whole lot of damage within that initial 12 or 13 seconds and luckily this particular scone is gonna come in the smoke screen here after me and that is basically the thing that is gonna save the day here as it turns out you see I have full health I haven't taken any damage at all I'm spotted here he is rushing me so there the torpedoes are no good and those yeah that's really a bad deal there with the torpedo aiming situation here he beached himself I guess he was really excited but he lets those torpedoes go and they are like 80 knot torpedoes and those are definitely a big time problem except for the fact that they don't produce that much damage and I survived and I was able to take the scone out with no problem there with the main guns and the uh, rather fast fire rate of the black right there. So you've got a quicker fire rate with Mordoff and you have more power output from the main guns. And for me, that was a difference maker. Here's a Ganesh now just sitting here. I don't know if he's having lunch or what, but he is just sitting there uh, kind of happy right there, I think. He's uh, just sitting there. Now he's caught on fire, so he's probably not so happy right there on that deal. But we're just going to rain fire from this position behind the island. We're not being observed right now, so the island is providing quite a bit of cover, and that is awesome. We've started three fires, 20,000 damage, and climbing. So this is a bad day for the Ganesh now right here. He is getting completely obliterated by these HE shells. And you can see the super fast fire rate right there. That is unbelievable. And we are going to rack up quite a few main gun hits here by the time we get done with this match. I believe it's over uh, 100 main gun hits. We're up to 61 already. So the black can definitely dish out the main guns with uh, their super fast reload rate. And the, uh, the additional damage from the armor piercing and HE shells uh, doesn't hurt either. There is a Scharnhorst over there. The um, perceptive indicator was showing me that there was a ship closer than the Ganesh now. And I believe it was at Scharnhorst. There's also the Nagato over there that looks like he was nine kilometers away. So here I'm thinking about taking out the Ganesh now and trying to finish him off, but he just gets blown out by my teammate. So he was definitely having a bad uh, a bad situation right there. 
and the Sharn Horse has closed in. I'm trying to see whether I can get a, another, some more hits. And there, I'm spotted by the Nagato, I believe it was, so I hit the smoke. And the Nagato is gone really quickly. I'm not really sure what happened there. It could have been some torpedoes or a bunch of Citadel hits. And in any way, it looked like he disappeared rather quickly. So now we're going to hit the Sharn Horse pretty much the same way that we were hitting the Ganese now earlier. So I let those torpedoes go. They weren't really anywhere near the aiming indicator. And I'm trying to compensate for him slowing down and making some kind of a turn right here. But he is getting blown out. The Sharn Horse getting blown out so quick. He's not even going to make it for the before the torpedoes get there. And we reload so quickly that we probably stealed, stole somebody's kill. So there's a Kansas. Looks like he's turning around to do a 180. And yeah, he is turning around, but I am still going to launch some torpedoes in that general direction because you never know. I'm not really sure where the destroyer is. He might be over by the Kansas. I don't know. In any event, I took uh, those torpedo shots at him, and boy, those things are slow. In fact, in many matches, I think I can almost outrun my torpedoes. It seems like they are that slow. It's just crazy. But I guess that's part of the challenge of playing the black. Or, I guess, fun. All right, so now we're going to come here, up here and start capturing B. We already have one captured base. We're going to capture a second one right here. Right, so here I'm being spotted, and there I do hit the radar now, and there is a ZF-6, and he is getting completely obliterated by my quick reloading main guns with kind of a uh, high damage output, I think, and his guns are pointing in the wrong direction. He probably has a very bad traverse speed, or maybe his main guns were disabled. In any event, he definitely got taken out right there. He didn't last too long. Right, so the battle's ended. The match is over with. 465,000 credits. 53,000 battle performance damage on 108 main gun hits. Two destroyed ships, four set fires, two defended flags, one captured flag. Let's see how we did on the team result. All right, well, first place overall, 2,500 XP. Not a bad match, I'll take it. One of my better games in the black, actually. All right, let's see how we did on the economy tab. Whoa, 353,000 credits by the time it was all said and done. I do think the new economy changes for premium tier sevens is definitely paying off quite literally. All right, well, that's it for the black overall. A pretty good ship if you come to grips with the fact that it is not a torpedo boat because of the very slow torpedo speeds and you work to set up a gunboat situation. And for me, Vincent Mordoff was the guy who did it. And if you don't have Mordoff, you got to give Halsey or Arlie Burke a try and hope that your red team opponents will trip all over your torpedoes like you saw here in the highlights. This is the Jaguar, and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching, and subscribe if you like it.